What's up, what's up, everybody? This is your host, DJ Remster, and you, my friends, are listening to The Revolution Show, the show that rocks to a different beat. Tonight is kind of a special night. We are joined here by, I guess you could say, two guests. i got one guest who's an artist and one guest who we want to get you back in the studio as fast as possible. So, I am joined today with uh, DJ Dave, my co-host tonight, sort of. Good to be back, good to be back. Just wanted to make sure everything was plugged in the right way, you know? Yeah, well, I mean, I was the main guy here, so I can understand you wanted to come in and check on that, so. And we are joined in studio today with none other than Gabe Smith. Gabe, how are you doing? Hey, it's me. It's your boy Gabe. How are you doing? What's up? What's up? So, let's see, it's been a little bit since we've had you here in the air. Dude, I've done so much stuff since the last time I've been here. I, I have gone a lot of places, I've done a lot of things, and I'm, I'm so glad to be back. I'm so glad to be back with you. It's nice, it's nice, definitely nice. We're going to be uh, talking with Gabe throughout the, at least this first hour here, you know. Uh, so, if you guys aren't familiar with who Gabe is, we'll be able to introduce you and stuff like that to him. And, hear a little bit about his story, his music that he's doing now, you know, because you've been doing music for a little bit, actually. Yeah, like like 10 years now. I, I would say 10 years professionally. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but before we get into all that, uh, I got my prerequisites here, the studio stuff and everything like that. So let's talk a little bit about the show. Uh, of course, the Revolution Show, we come on every Friday and Saturday night, right here at re revolutionshow.org. Uh, and on Monday nights, too, revolutionshow.ca with uh, DJ North. Shout out to you, DJ North. Um, a fellow Canadian. A uh, fellow Canadian, eh? <laughs> They're in Canada, and his name's DJ North. That's yeah. really creative. All right, I don't mean to interrupt. That's just really creative. All right, go ahead. Carry on. Carry I on. thought Let's it go. worked, actually. It <laughs> That's good. Ten, 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 ten points. To okay. the point. <laughs> right to the point there, yeah. But uh, So we got that going on, guys. Don't forget, you can listen in multiple different ways. You can go on our website. Uh, the Get Me app, I think it's called, or something like that. Uh, you can listen that way. Tune in. Yeah, tune in. You're still going to ask for... The old radio station to find us. If you yell at it a couple of times, you will get Revolution Show. <laughs> Just yell at it. It's technology. That's what you gotta do. That's how you make tech work. Uh, let's see here. Don't forget, guys. You can find us on Instagram. You can find us on Facebook and Twitter. Yeah. So if you haven't done it already, give us a like. And uh, that being said, why don't we get on with this? So, Gabe. Hey. Why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are? So for the people who don't know, who's Gabe? What is Gabe? Who is Gabe? So, Social security number, data. Yeah, 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 yeah. The back, the, uh, the back of my credit card numbers, you know. <laughs> so, hi, uh, I'm, I'm Gabe. I have been doing uh, electronic music and skateboarding and videography and had my hand in a little bit of everything uh, mm -hmm. when it comes to art and music and that kind of stuff for many, many years now. Um, I started a skate company, uh, like skateboarding. Uh, when I was 12 years old and uh, actually hustled cupcakes at my middle school and sold cupcakes to the kids and faculty to be able to save up enough money for my first computer and then started immediately performing. Nice. Um, and, cool. <laughs> yeah, I remember you were telling me about the, uh, the whole state of the community the last time you were in here. Yep. And uh, that's, that's important, you know, because sometimes I feel like in the church world we, we're so focused on this, you know, yeah, the, the sanctuary yeah, exactly. itself and stuff like that that we almost forget uh, the people out there and when we do reach out, you know, they're reaching out to the homeless, which they should and yep. stuff, or people who have problems, but we almost forget you got the metal crowd that's out there that needs yep. people to speak to, you got the skaters that, there are all these little pockets, these little demographics that need someone to go in and talk and stuff, you know, so. Well, we're going to be like Paul, we're going to be all things to all people. Yeah, yeah. That's like exactly my thing. Like that's, that's, you know, and that's like my demographic of people that listen to my stuff is like, I used to say, you know, uh, back in the day of uh, early on doing this, people that listen to my stuff, I would call them like citizens of the gray planet because it, it was like people that are in this gray area that are missed. You know, there isn't yeah. a lot of word for the people who like electronic music. There isn't a lot of answers other than like continuously get higher and overdose and die. You know, there isn't any alternative for like, hey, like, let's make a difference in the world. Right, right. And so right now, uh, something I'm doing is twice a week on my YouTube channel and my Twitch and, and a couple other platforms, I do this thing called the Light Designs Cult Meeting. And so everybody who subscribes to my channel is part of the Light Designs Cult. And it's a joke. It's it's not mm. actually a cult. Yeah. It's a joke. <laughs> that was, that, that did, that's going to lead into one of the things I had, because I'm a little curious about what you were going with. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. Um, it's like, it, it's an edgy joke. It's, yeah, is, but it's, that's okay. It's not actually a cult, you know, right. and... and, and 
why that came to be is because the subscriber base, although it isn't PewDiePie level subscribers, you know, insane numbers, the, the demographic of people that watch my stuff, we are such a tight knit community. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like I have subscribers all over the globe that are tuned in right this second. Like nice. dude, one of my friends is staying up right now in the UK and it's like four thirty in the morning for nice. him. So, you know, and we have this big group chat. I know people's families, you know, I know uh, my subscribers' wife by name and their kids, you know, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, we are a tight, tight family. Tight-knit community. Tight-knit community. Yeah, yeah. And so it's like everybody really feels like we're, we're part of something and we're healing together and we're healing through music and positivity mm -hmm. and, you know, the whole thing right now is, is I, I run a company called Light Designs. Yeah. And what used to be like Gabe Smith pop culture icon mm -hmm. and Skate for Your Die over here and then all this stuff over there, Light Designs has kind of blanketed all of that where it's like a one-stop shop for all of the nonsense that I do. But it also is a place where everybody can kind of get, you know, whatever thing they enjoy. There's the skateboarding over there, there's the music, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And so it's part of the Light Designs cult. And the whole name behind Light Designs is... Um, my whole mission in life, my whole mission statement of, of my ministry and my, my time on this planet is to do everything I can every day to do the best I possibly can to light up the darkness in any way possible. Love it. You know, and I that, and the, like, you're not going to get it right every day. You know what I mm -hmm. mean? You're going to fall down the stairs and start swearing your face off or you're going to yell at somebody or lose your patience from time to time. But it's, it's those small acts of kindness that really make a difference in the world. Mm -hmm. And a lot of my subscriber base and demographic is, is people that struggle with self-mutilation and suicide mm. and those kind of things. And that's a battle that I struggled with the majority of my life. Yeah. I started self-harming at six years old, and I battled until I was about 21. That's a long time. It's a long time. And that it's, is a long time. It's a long, and it took a lot out of me. You know, I, I am about to turn 31, and I'm mm. exhausted. <laughs> you know, like, but... but, but that's what it's all based around is you know is is lighting up the darkness and extending the hand of friendship yeah. and i yeah. close out my shows a lot of the time with like you know reach out that hand you know a lot of younger kids watch my show so like sit down and have lunch with somebody you know mm -hmm. compliment somebody on on something start a conversation with somebody on something because it might save their life you know yeah. and, and and just that couple moments of of branching out of your own comfort zone might keep somebody on the planet <clears throat> and it's like i'm not, i'm sorry i'm i'm kind of rambling here i'm taking no I'm no taking, keep I'm going, dude, keep going. No, um that's why we got you on here to talk we want it they hear me all the time they hear dave all the time yeah i'm tired of hearing i just I, well, I just realized that i, I just kind of just commandeered the whole show here hi that's welcome cool, to the cool. game show yeah <laughs> so like my one of my favorite movies of all time is it's a wonderful life you know that christmas oh, movie? I love okay it. i love it yeah well, I watched it this year. Yes, I did. It, it's, it's fantastic but why i like that movie so much is if you take a step back from the movie and you look at the premise of it where you don't even you, your human mind can't even fathom how many people that your life touches on, mm -hmm. on your lifetime. And we, we yeah. spend like 80, 90 yeah. years on this planet. Either positive or negative. Positive you know I mean? or negative. Yeah. True. Yeah. True. And, um, and so like I try and vocalize that to people like, hey, you know, first impressions are important. Reaching out to people is important. And just those little acts, you know? Right, right. Holding your tongue when you could like mm -hmm. lose your patience with somebody you know? accepting people for who they are as they are you exactly know? that's, that's yeah. what god does with us you know he we we don't have to fix ourselves to come to him that's his job that's a big thing too is people think they got to clean up their whole lives and all this kind of stuff before you know and that's not the point that's right. not the point of right. any of this and that's like like even yesterday i was talking about uh, an incident that happened and uh I had brought up um, the gift of no condemnation that we have through yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. And a lot of people don't fully grasp just what that means and what that encompasses. Now, you mentioned earlier, if we make mistakes, we fall down, you swear, this is that, blah, 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 and stuff. Yeah. There is this kind of false image out there that Christians are super saints and we don't ever make mistakes. No. And the ones that do are the hypocrites. You know what I say? Um, the church is full of hypocrites. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> and that's okay because the reality is it's... And I, I guess I would use that term loosely, because I'm not actually saying that we're all hypocrites. What I'm saying is, if you're going to go into church and say you never make a mistake, well, then yeah, you are, really are. But if you go to church acknowledging that we make mistakes, but we have a Savior that paid for it all. Yeah. Paid for it all. And then when we go to Him, 
One of my favorite lines in the scripture, it's so short, but it is so powerful. I mean, Jesus is on that cross, and he says, it is finished. All the penalties paid. All of it. Yeah. Everything you've ever done is paid for at that point. The only thing you have to do is put yourself in alignment with, is he your savior or not? Yeah. And then, if he's your savior, then he saved you from everything you've done. You know? And when you're saved, when you've come to that point of salvation with him, you make mistakes... That's been that's already been paid for under yeah. the blood. Yeah, this exactly. isn't a free license to just go and sin, but what it does is it gives us the ability to sit there and say, as, or what I think Paul was talking about, living a life of thanksgiving, you fall down, be thankful. Wow, you know, Jesus, you paid for that. Yeah. I am forgiven right now. You know, that's yeah, powerful. Yeah. That moves people. You don't have to carry it around either. You mm -hmm. don't have to go through the rest of your life carrying around your mistakes either. Right. You know, like right. that's like we learn from our mistakes, but we don't live in our mistakes. Exactly. Exactly. But we have to recognize them. See, and that's that is the I think the the one thing that I've learned is that the key to knowledge of whether or not you're his is can you sin without conscience? Can you sin I, and not feel see, instantly well now, recognize that you've just sinned? I want to say you know something I mean? about that because I, I know what you're saying there. Um, I feel that. There's a difference between living a lifestyle of sin and living in it. Yeah. All right, mm -hmm. living a lifestyle of sin would be kind of what you're saying. Like you got a guy committing adultery, doesn't feel anything from it, doesn't bother him at all. You got a guy who's committing adultery and it does bug him. Yeah. Yeah, you may live in that for a while and stuff like that, but it's eating away at you. Yeah. That I think is is a sign right there. Now, how soon they respond to that is a different story. But if they still respond to that, they respond to that. He shouldn't do that in the first place. That's kind of that's messed up, dude. I agree. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I just got corrected by Gabe. Okay, <laughs> but the point to be made is, yeah. Again, I'm not permitting that, guys. All right. Know, you're I'm not like you saying you're doing no, 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 I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But um, the point to be made is his forgiveness is complete. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's complete, and uh, so. Wow, how do we get there from here? I don't know, I just start rambling. Yeah, it's good, it's good. So, um, i got to ask you something. Okay. And this is something a buddy of mine's always asking me questions about and stuff like that when I get talking to artists and stuff. I have a friend who's trying to do music, EDM kind of stuff or whatever. Yeah. How do you even get started in that? Uh, Where does that uh, come from? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> So That's I, a loaded question uh, right there, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I mean... Electronics. Uh, well, that helped. <laughs> So is is your friend interested in performing electronic music or writing electronic music that I he think performs? right now he is doing more writing it. Okay. But I think he wants to do like performing at some point, but it is a very difficult time in twenty twenty two to make something of yourself um, in any genre. Because it's such an oversaturated market. You upload a YouTube video and you are competing with about, what is it, Peter, like 50,000, 500,000, something oh, like that. So other. Shouts out to my manager, Peter, by the way. And, so, um, we're, we're actually shooting a documentary about, about my life. Uh, as, mm -hmm. as we are here right now. Okay, let me get back to the question. <laughs> I get distracted so quick. Okay, um, it's hard. It's yeah. hard. And, and I would say... I recently had a conversation with an artist who is bigger than me in my own genre. And I think his advice is valid, and so I'm going to share that. Grassroots marketing is always the best. Always the best. Even to this day, old school grassroots marketing. Look okay. at me. I'm sitting here on the radio with you mm -hmm. right now. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. reaching out and making contact with people is the easiest way to really make something of yourself. You yeah. can email a link. 50,000 times to whatever, but the actual connection of connecting people, tracking down people, you know, going to shows, being present, paying attention to who's important, you know, and, and talking to those people. Right. And making friends and being marketable. Being marketable is very important, you know. Okay, yeah, yeah. If you, you know, you, you have to have something to stand yourself out a little bit, um, but I think having good people skills and working very hard, you know, you'll get to where, where you're destined to be. You know, okay. it might not be exactly where you want to be, but it will be where you're destined to be. So, how long does it take for you? Because, like, we get a couple tracks that we're going to be playing for you from your uh, album today. Sure. Um, in fact, why don't we get that? I'm going to play a song right now, and um, when after it's done, we'll talk a little bit about the inspiration behind it, sure. where it came from, and stuff like that. What song shall I pick? How about Gabby? Come on. 
Is that your bike, Gator? Come on, man. Come on, man. All right, so uh, this. Not Gabe. I never said I was known for my pronunciation. It's okay. No, I spell that name weird. I say, I spell it wrong. Like Gabe, the E Y. That's not proper. And it's like it's you're not. I get that all the time. But that's how I like to spell my name. Hey, I'm cool with that. It's all good. So. Uh, this next one that we're gonna play right now is uh, Gat ga Gavy. Come <laughs> on, man! Oh, oh, we man. just went over this. I'm <laughs> out of here. Come on, ADD. ADD. I can use that flag, right? <laughs> so, all right, guys, we're gonna play this song here. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that right after. Again, you guys listen to the Revolution Show right here, RevolutionShow.org. So, uh, good time. So that there was Gavy. Come on. I got it right there. Yeah, it's Gabe. It's, Gabe, just, it's Gabe. like Gabe, but with a E. I know. I don't know why I kept saying. Or it's because the other day I was calling it Gabby. Come on. Oh, okay. And now it's, you know, you do something one way, then it takes forever for you to break out of that. Yeah. That's yeah. me right there. So let's talk about that song there. So how do you come up with that? Like, where do you even begin? I don't know. That's, that's <laughs> <laughs> so the, so the, do, you, do you start with like I bass mean, track or something like that? I mean, where the... I guess the, the question I'm asking is... I'm going to have a really nerdy answer. <laughs> I hope you're ready for it oh, now. Okay, we're, we're good, we're good. You know, that's... Okay, so um, th that particular song is actually pretty cool. The sample of going, Gabby, come on, mm -hmm. is from my, my niece, Juliana, who cool. is like my best friend. Yeah. And she's three years old, and um, she wakes me up in, in the morning sometimes when I'm over at my mom's house. And she'll uh, she'll be like, get out of get out of bed. What are you doing, Kiwi? Come on! And she's <laughs> she's got a, a personality that's ten feet tall. Yeah. And she's kind of she's kind of like my my little protege. You know, she I got her in the music. I taught her how to skateboard. I, I made her a skateboard for her Christmas, and she's three years old and can skate by herself. Wow. And yeah, nice. yeah, it's really impressive, <laughs> nice. honestly. And and she's like musically talented, like already. You know, she's got a little ukulele, and I got a little DJ controller, and she's she's on it. Like she's yeah. gonna she's gonna be, you know, big someday for sure. Yeah, I mean, if that's the life path that she chooses, right, I hope right. she chooses something that makes more money than music. But you know, <laughs> <laughs> well, music is tough for me. Temporary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, so it was uh, I, it was a clip I, of her just being cute that I recorded on my phone, and she's always giving me a hard time. She's yeah. always, she's always messing with me. She's Gaby, come on. Mm -hmm. So um, how that that particular song came to be and just messing around with different sequences and melodies and stuff like that. Uh, I engineer in Logic Pro X. Use a lot of reactor plugins, a lot of stuff from Splice as well. Mm -hmm. Splice is like, but Splice makes everything so much easier. Is is all of this just you? Yeah. You're producing your own thing, everything, really. Yeah, very, very much, impressive. for the most part. I mean, That's you impressive. Know, it, I, to, be, to be fair, every now and then I throw in samples from stuff, you know, plugins that have drum loops. And right, crap no, I get space, that. You know, stuff like that. But, like, I do everything. So you really are, like, independent artist. Yeah, basically. yeah. I, I really, I, like, I just got a manager. Right, right, and I, right. And I, Yeah, because you didn't have that last time I It's just you. been, like, honestly, it's been, like, me and my mom for yeah. like the last 10 years just kind of you know i do all the music and all the performances and j i didn't go to school or nothing i just kind of mm -hmm. figured it out in my basement and you know and went all over the world with it so far you right know? so right. keep going yeah, <laughs> i guess yeah do you when you're trying to make these tracks and stuff do you have like general themes in your head that you want to go with and stuff or? sometimes sometimes i'll uh so like I, i'm the type of person who will get like stuck on stuff and then just like yeah. say it over and over and over until everybody in my life hates me um <laughs> like for instance um there were these dog treats that i bought for my dog like years ago They're called walkie fit bites and i walked mm -hmm. around and said walkie fit bites for like I don't know, good year. Just going, why you fan bites? And it, it became one of my songs. I don't remember how, but like the cadence of saying walkie. I'm like a crazy person. I'm We're looking sorry. at the inner secrets, the inner workings of his mind are an enigma. But that's music. Music is taking the common and making it melodic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I like that. Making it, making it so you want to hear it as opposed to. Yeah, so like most of the time, a lot of like melodies and stuff like that will either come from me just rambling about something and a going over and over and over um or i will sit down and just make it 
Yeah. Um, a lot of stuff just comes right from there, and it's like, cool, I like that idea, and then you build on it, and then you know you complete it in a day, or you complete it a year from now. Mm-hmm. Like, there's a song on my last album, the Stay Alive album, called um, Too Bad, So Sad. And I started that when I was in China, and I finished it, like, last year. All right, so, like, so, oh, I, I'm okay. sorry, I just got to say one thing, because I don't want to forget, so Dave, remind me. He just said when he came back from, or while he was in China, so we got to talk about that. So first talk about this, then we got to talk about I, that. I literally watched you perk up in your seat right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, here we that's, go. <laughs> well, that's something. I definitely want to... Sorry, like, sorry I had boring answers about engineering. <laughs> 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 All right, keep going with what you're doing, but I don't know, dude. What, what were we talking about? You were, you were asking about music. How he makes the music. How I make the music. Yeah, yeah so I use a lot of various plugins, and, you know, some of it is I'm sitting there just figuring out, hashing it out, you know, and, I, and sometimes I stream myself engineering. Other times I'll have an idea and I sit with it. Also, like, I've been writing a lot more stuff with lyrics in it lately mm-hmm. um, and singing and, and doing loud, awful, screechy vocals on my, on my tracks more so as well. That's Remy's style. Like that is my style. style. I'm yeah. a hardcore kid all day, all day long. Okay, rad, rad. I, so like, I, I like that kind of stuff a lot. I've been diving more into like the screamo-y side of things. Um, and so like, there's an album, uh, there's a song on my album, the, the last song on my album, um, that is about my childhood best friend who shot himself in the head oh. this past year. And he, uh, he, yeah, he, like, blew his brains out, like, this past year. And Ooh. so the song is, is about that, and it's just, like, raw, just emotion of, yeah. of just, like, you know, I wrote some lyrics down and then streamlined them even more to make it even rawer, you know, and then that is kind of that. Would that be the one that's called, titled Missing You, I think? Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Uh, the, uh, yeah, that's, that's the one right there about, um, yeah, it's about my friend Casey. I did want to ask you a little bit about the lyrics in that one there and stuff like that. I noticed that that one did seem like it had some kind of lyrics in it. Yeah, yeah. Um, we'll definitely, ooh, that's kind of like. No, keep it light and fun. I, we'll get to that at the end. We'll, we'll make everybody cry at the end. Yeah, yeah, we'll save that one for later, definitely, but, uh, Wow. Well, All right, the big well, thing right now is that, you know, he talks about your, your, your beginnings, the self-harming, and, yeah. and now losing your friend that way, and how that has become really an epidemic yeah. right oh, now. Yeah, it has. Yeah. People you know, become so two-dimensional, like you were saying, being here, we're three-dimensional, we're real. Yeah. You know, and reaching out and talking to someone one-on-one, encouraging or whatever, yeah. that's real, you know, but these smartphones and this two-dimensional world that so many of them are living in, it's not real. And it's yeah. so easy for the, the, the liar to you know, manipulate that stuff and, we, and get people to do horrible things to themselves. So I definitely, awesome. I can't say I've had as hard, like now that I've actually listened to people talk and stuff and heard a lot of stories, I say to myself, on my job, it wasn't that bad. Yeah. But I definitely, growing up in it, it didn't feel that good and stuff like that. Um, there was, I mean, I was not saying that it was all bad, but you know, I was kind of always a loner, always by myself all the time. Sure. Uh, I was the nerdy kid in school and stuff. And uh, I only had really two ways out. I had my cat, Midnight, who was always good at helping me feel. She'd sure. listen no matter what, you know, so it was all good. Yeah, she had and, a and my great Yeah. <laughs> and so my, went, so my great grandma was another one who was. And you had the food, wrong. right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I had to lure in, but. Um, and I mean, I mean, I remember for a little bit when I was younger in like sixth grade and something like that, taking like, not the exacto knives, but those uh, knives you use for like uh, models and stuff yeah, like that, yeah, you yeah. know, and I remember scratching my arm up and stuff and then I kept getting caught every time I do it. So yeah. then I stopped trying to do that and I tried finding other ways to deal with, you know, my emotions and stuff like that. And what ended up happening is I became a very angry person. Yes. As a result. Yes. Of it. It's very dark. And, it's uh, very dark. Oh yeah. 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 You trade one pain for another. Yeah. Yeah. Basically is what happened. So, um, you know, and, and everything happened. I believe everything does happen in a, for a reason. It all shapes us into who we're going to be. Yep. You know, so for me, that pain ended up turning into this big thing. And then I got married. We had kids. And um, it took me, hitting a point where I was about to lose my family because I got caught in, in garbage. And uh, I remember, you know, going down that dark road thinking, Everyone would be better off without me, you know? Yeah. I do remember that. I remember driving down the highway thinking, if I hit that guardrail just right, can I do it without feeling anything? Yeah. You know? Well, they know I did it. Yeah. Yeah. 
But I mean, you scary know, scary thoughts. God kept me going, mm -hmm. and then I ended up. I remember the day clearly. I was at work, and uh, my wife, because she got saved before I did, and um, I had always knew about God and stuff like that. My great grandmother put a lot of seeds, if you may, about who God is, Jesus and stuff. Yeah. Uh, but I never really quite accepted it and stuff. And uh, this one day, I'm at work, and I decided to work through my lunch, so everyone was gone, and I'm hooking up these cylinders. I work at a gas plant. Okay. And I'm hooking up these cylinders, and I just remember thinking to myself, you know, I don't want your death for me to be in vain. I'm sorry. I need your help right now. I need you. Yeah. You know, and that's changed it. I remember feeling something coming over me, kind of feeling like everything's going to be okay. you got some stuff we're going to go through, but everything's going to be okay. And, and things change. I will admit one thing that, and this isn't the case for everybody, but one thing that did change with me was I remember that night I had told her that I had done it. Uh, but more importantly, it was the first night in like two months that I hadn't fantasized about going off the road and stuff. Yeah. You know, it just didn't occur to me at all. Yeah. And uh, life has been different for me ever since, you know. So I can definitely relate, again, not to the same point that I've heard some people talk. Some people have shared some really deep stories. Yeah. You know, I mean, you're talking about from six years yeah, old. Yeah, six years old. Yeah, you know? you know, it's funny you said that. Just to, like, touch on one thing you said, like, like y y it was the first night that you, you didn't fantasize about ending your life. And for a long time, the only way I could fall asleep would be thinking about different ways to end my life. And yeah. it's like, dude, it, it engulfs you. It engulfs you so deeply and, and and we live in a society now that like glorifies it. It's yeah. cool. It's cool to be sad. It's yeah. cool to have an eating disorder. It's cool to, you know, almost kill yourself all the time. And the it's whole like emo. so messed up, you know. Yeah. You know, it's like it's really it's heavy stuff. And it, it, especially like, I mean, I grew up at a time, you know, the like scene kid time. Mm. You know, and, and the, the edgy, hardcore kid time. So, it, it especially in, in my age group, it was cool, you know, and, and it's like, it's, it, it's, man, it's such a mess. You know, if you're listening to these airwaves, don't cut yourself. Yeah. Seriously, like, don't. Like, it, 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 it does so much more to you than what you are able to comprehend. Like, your physical body will heal most likely. You know, you might have scars or whatever, but, like, the emotional trauma that you are going to cause yourself and your mind and the people that care about you, it is not worth it. No. And, and like, whatever vice, whatever vice that you are struggling in with, with your life, like, just, just don't. Like, people care about you, you know? And, and it's so easy to go down these slippery slopes where you go down and you don't even realize how, like, screwed up you are. Mm -hmm. Until, you know, somebody points it out sometimes or right. until you're in a sticky situation, you know, and, yep. and it's like, man, just try, just try your best to know what's right and do the right thing. And, <laughs> you know? and talk to somebody. Talk yeah. to somebody. You gotta, you gotta have somebody that you can talk to. Yeah, somebody that's, that's, that's that's stinking, that stinking thinking, that stinking thinking, you know, that, that, that gets people. Well, so that's you just sit there the, in your own little shell. Well, yeah. you gotta think about it too. There's almost like, when you're in that spot. You're almost afraid to say something to somebody. You're afraid, oh, they're going to commit me or, you know, I'm going to lose friends or family or something like that. And that fear yeah. kind of keeps you stuck in that spot. Mm -hmm. You're afraid yeah. to say something because you're afraid of consequence from it. Yeah, like, well, yeah, exactly. You're, you're almost afraid to bring it up because they'll have you committed or, or right. like, overreact in a way that yeah. won't be helpful to you. Because in all due honesty, not everybody's going to react right when yeah. they hear that. Yeah. That is true, too. But I, I, just like what Gabe said here, don't let that stop you from reaching out. And if you need help, honestly, like if you need help, there, there's a suicide prevention hotline out there. You know, there, there, is, there is options out there for you to get in contact with. And, and like if you need to talk to someone, we live in the digital age, you know, where not everything is horrible from the digital age. Mm -hmm. Help well, is readily available at your fingertips no matter what. No matter mm -hmm. where you are on the planet, wherever you are yeah. listening to this, if you are someone who's just like, hey, yo, I need to talk to somebody, there are plenty of wonderful apps out there. There is plenty of wonderful phone numbers you can call. And, and and talk to somebody who will listen, you know, an, an impartial party that you can get these things off your chest with and, and you know, stay on the planet. You're, you're alive. Listen, people, it, this isn't even just the interview. I'm, I'm talking to viewer listen to, to, to this. You're alive for a reason, and you're on this planet for a reason. Mm -hmm. And there, there has not, in the history of all of humanity, all of us little humans on this big blue earth, there has never been another person like you. Mm -hmm. And there never will never be will another be. person like mm -hmm. you, because you are a unique being. 
to this planet. Absolutely. And your purpose on this being, your purpose on this planet as that little being is, is significant. And you have a mission that you need to be doing. I don't know what it is, but it's important. And you need to stay alive for it, okay? You just know, just do your boy gave me a favor and stay alive, okay? There it is. You know, I, I've said this before, and it's so true. God doesn't make mistakes. He made us, each and every one of us. Yeah. And he didn't make you by accident. And, you know, he didn't make you faulty or flawed or this or that. He made you with a purpose. You know, he had a, a thought in his head, and he said, I'm going to make this person, you know, and he did. And uh, so you're not a mistake. You weren't put on earth as a mistake. You know, bad things can happen to us in this life, but you are not a mistake. I'm a, I'm a firm believer in, like, you know, the, the choices that you make. You have your own free will to make, mm -hmm. make your own bad decisions. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I feel like all of our decisions and choices that we have made are, are leading you up to a certain point. You know, and you're on the path that you are supposed to be on. You know, you, mm -hmm. you have led to the, your destiny of where you're supposed to be because of your choices and decisions of, of what you've made that have been pre, you know, a, I, I believe that we truly have free will, but, you know, our story has been written long ago, you know. Yeah, and even the bad stuff has yeah. purpose, yeah. you know. exactly, you'll it learn, has purpose. You learn from the pain. You, so you, you learn. have a testimony, yeah. exactly, right. you know. It's like Paul, you know, if yeah. you want to know about pain, right? Yeah, <laughs> and it's like, man, you know, I, I, I look back at my life. I've only been on this planet for a little while. And I look back at my life and, like, I, I no one forced me to start hurting myself. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's a conscious decision that I have made. But now I'm sitting in this, this radio station with you fine people sharing my life experiences in hopes that it will help somebody not make the right. same mistakes. So I'm grateful for the mistakes that I have made mm -hmm. to be able mm -hmm. to get to this point to say, hey, don't kill yourself, okay? It's not cool. Right, you know? right. No, I hear you definitely. Um... And that's kind of to the point of something that we had mentioned earlier. You can learn from the things you have, or you can live in those things that you have. Exactly. You know. Yeah. So we've learned from those things, and that's not to say feelings don't come and get you get hit with stuff. I mean, I get hit with stuff every now and then. Oh yeah. Can be pretty hard and stuff, but we have gone through this, you know. So we know what worked for us. We're willing to talk. Just sometimes, just listening, it yeah. does so much. Oh, just be, and so being much. being a confident listener. Yeah. yeah, confidential listener. Exactly. That, that, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. so important, yeah. you know, because, you know, it's like in the old <clears throat> Catholic church I grew up in, you know, the confessional is this dark little closet, yeah. you know, and, <laughs> but, um, but in a way, one. but in a way that is, it's, it's a safe, it, it represented a safe place, you yes. know what I mean? And that's what a lot of people are, and like you say, using the internet is great. And these these helplines because you got people there that the only reason they're answering that phone is because they really do care. Yeah. yeah. And they actually know what you're going through and how to help you. And that's why you know when you when you're lost and you don't know what to do, you, you find someone that does, and that's 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 yeah. where you look. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, I'm gonna play another song. Uh, this one's called Grippy Sock Vacation, <laughs> and I got that one correct. <laughs> so, but before I play it, can you explain the name? <laughs> Grippy socks. Oh wait a minute. Are you familiar with what that term means? I'm thinking it's a hospital socks. Yeah, hospital socks. Well, that's what I was thinking it was. You know, so that's why I'm like, okay, so yeah, us old guys know about that stuff. Hey, no, they, <laughs> hey, those make awesome socks. They give those away once you bend down. That you can go away with them. <laughs> I got a pair at home. Are you kidding me? They're but, like slippers. But don't put them in the dryer. <laughs> well, they'll survive a few rounds. <laughs> Stick them to the edges. Yeah, yeah, they will. <laughs> Alright, play the song. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, guys. So, now let me know what they are. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you guys listen to the Revolution Show right here at revolutionshow.org. I'm here with DJ Dave and Gabe Smith. Yeah, that was Grippy Sock Vacation. <laughs> <laughs> right here, only on the rev. Oh, no. <laughs> so, uh, and we are joined in here with Gabe Smith. Gabe. Um, <laughs> It has been quite a, a quite a night, <laughs> I gotta say. Well, that's nice. You know, I like that that song there is actually quite peppy and stuff like that. And um, at one point, there's someone in the song saying, was it uh, Gabby Smith Pop? Oh, uh, come on. oh my goodness, I can't say the whole thing. I understand what she's saying, I'm not doing it. Ask Gabby. <laughs> I bet you he knows what she's saying. So, hi, it's your boy Gabby. Um, yeah, so <laughs> that is a sample actually from like one of my old, 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 old mixtapes. 
And um, a little behind the scenes, actually, is I, I called a, a friend of mine, and I was like, hey, can you, like, yell at me on the phone? And I, I want to use it <laughs> in a song. And, um, <laughs> yeah, and so it went out on, on like, a bunch of different mixtapes and albums and stuff like that. And uh, I'm kind of going through, like, a reinvention of my career. I used to go by Gabe Smith, pop culture icon. The yeah, I time. remember that last time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I, I since have, you know, transitioned into a little bit more of an adult. So I, I'm just going by Gabe Smith these days. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, oh, you know what? It would be kind of cool. You know, I'm putting things out on major platforms now. So, like, let's, you know, throw it in there and it fit nicely. And, um, and yeah, I, I like it a lot. That's, that's where that came it from. It works. It yeah. works. Yeah, no, I, I heard that and I said, that's kind of funny, because at first I'm like, so I'm like, when I hear lyrics, I don't really hear the lyrics at first, I have to actually sit there and listen, Yeah. you know. So you're and, a music uh, guy. I guess, yeah. I yeah, I, I'm the same But the interesting way. thing is for me, like, the lyrics are part of the music. Yeah. I kind of yeah. hear the lyrics as part of music, like an instrument and stuff like exactly. that, before I'll hear the actual lyrics themselves. Oh man, you would love cloud rap. You ever listen to cloud rap? Uh, no. It's like, it's, it, the, the lyrics are completely meaningless, but it's used as a tool <laughs> to make like a whole sa sound or, okay. I'm, so, no, that's funny that you say what's that. What's that called again? It's cloud rap. Down. Cloud rap, huh? Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, never mind. Anyways, no, no, go, no, go, go, go. All right. I well, no, because like you know, I, it's true. A lot of times, a lot of folks put on to uh, lyrics and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but I mean, hey, even growing up, I remember an artist that I used to like to listen to. Uh, they were called Faith No More. This is secular stuff. Sure. But even their vocalist said, you know, a lot of people put a lot of emphasis on lyrics. He goes, I just pick stuff that the words fit for yes. the, the way they sound. <laughs> so it's just like. Yeah, that's true. You actually, you know, sometimes we kind of forget that some people are just putting lyrics in just for... Yeah. I mean, like, that's not how I... I there's, like, a super significant meaning to... Like, it, there's a lot yeah. of hidden messages and hidden meanings in all my songs. Really? And, like, yeah, everything... Like, everything sounds, like, funny and, like... You know, like it might oh, so be that, brighten up beats. That right so, there saying we're not doing that anymore. Yeah, well, saying the, I'm not doing that anymore. The, the term grippy sock vacation means you go to the mental hospital. Yeah. And so, so like <laughs> the whole sample is, is 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 the in the application of that was based around somebody like tormenting you to the point that you go to the mental oh, hospital. Oh. Um, okay, and okay. so like it's in this like nice peppy format, but it has like such a deeper deeper meaning and significance okay. and stuff like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like that's how like all my music is like um stay alive the album before this one had a lot of stuff like that like um play the character and mm -hmm. sugar free popsicles from the dollar store you know like all really mm -hmm. funny things at first but you take a second listen to it and listen to it right. deeper right and then it's like oh you appreciate it on a little bit different of a level you right. know what i mean well you know that's interesting too um i had heard an interview i think it was with red and uh they were talking about how um you know once you're going through something the the lyrics tend to pop out more. Y you know, I heard that too. You know? Like when you're in a good mood, you listen to the song. But when you need to hear something, when you, you when to it's the a lyrics. song that relates to what you're actually going through, all of a sudden there's a whole new meaning to the song. Well, it's like scripture. Every time yeah. you read it, there's there's <clears throat> something new to be called out of it. Yeah. You know? Yes. Yes. You know what song slaps? Can you know? I because I'm I'm here I'm here on the uh, on the Christian music airwaves right now, and you know what song slaps? That Waymaker song, I know it's okay. old, bro, bro. I'm not even like a worship music guy. Your boy be, I be crying. I got boogies <laughs> on my nose. Like, oh man, I love. That. I gotta say, my favorite worship song of all time comes from New Creation Worship. Okay. And it's called, um, oh shoot, now uh, uh, Anthem of Grace. Okay. And it's literally, it's all about the focus on what Christ did for us. Sure, kind of sure. And I just, I love that because it really brings me right back to the feet of Christ. Yeah. You know. Another song, and this I had this question once. I asked the question once uh, to the audience. I said, what do you guys count as worship music? Sure. And the reason why this came up is uh, at the time I was talking about, I was playing a, a, a group called Scandinavian Metal Praise. Oh, cool. You know, oh, it's cool. awesome. Great, it's okay. awesome. Why it's, is, it's, I want to hear more about that. that was, that's cool. What is all that? Okay, Scandinavian Metal Praise. They've done two albums to my knowledge, and it's, it's older now. But it's literally that. It's a bunch of Scandinavians doing power metal uh, worship songs. And it's flipping awesome. Okay? I love we it. Get it. <laughs> we do. We do. I can, I can actually I play. Actually, yeah, I will find one, uh, and I'll play it in just a moment. There you go. 
Thank you. Uh, but definitely, so I'm listening to this, and I'm saying to myself, this is my kind of worship. I want to see this in a church somewhere or something like yeah. that, you know? And, um, oh my goodness, it's going to take me forever to find it. Here it is. Yes, on the plane, You Are Worthy. It's one of my favorite versions of You Are Worthy. And, uh, but, so I, I got to thinking about it. I said, okay, so what counts as worship music? Because people take that personal. Yeah, their version of worship music, and you can't go beyond that point. Otherwise, that you you created sacrilege almost. Yeah, you know. Yeah, exactly. Um, you look at the way some of these churches, and I understand where they're going, but they're so guarded about the way they're doing the worship to you. Yeah, that they're forgetting that this is about you're playing music to God. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and you're trying to uh, get the the audience to worship God. It's supposed to be like the ultimate concert. Yeah. Yeah, no. no. When we go, but it's something you got to be doing together. I understand it's not that, a but if here's it's my a point. performance, then it isn't real. But here's my point: you go down to a concert and you see. We'll take for example uh, the the artist that you just brought up. Uh, his, his, he's media, escaping my, my mind right now. But who, Waymaker. Who, who does that? The, the, the I forget who actually made Waymaker. Made so right. forgive me for that one. But so we'll say that we got a, a group out there doing that. Yeah. Okay, we the Kingdom. We'll take that for example. And they're down there. Now they're, yes, their job is to go there and do an event. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there also is to go down there and lead people in worship. And they're giving their whole heart out. Yeah. And you're in this aud this auditorium with 3,000 plus people. Everyone's singing. Yeah. Everyone's worshiping. Yeah. Then you go to church. And you got sometimes just the worship team singing. Yeah. And it's like, where have we missed it? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Let the worship team do what they're going to do. Don't worry if you got someone who takes it the wrong way. God's gonna deal with that. But let the worship team lead people in worship yeah. in musical freedom, and let the people worship. You know, and that's that's my thing. So that's kind of what led this. This is kind of, I guess, a little per personal pet peeve of mine. Sure, yeah. Too I much research. Really upset about this. I, I am. I'm all fired. Well, it might be the monster right now. This seems gonna be like a, something really close to your heart. Well, so I asked this question. What is worship music to you guys? And um, for me, worship music is just simply what brings you to Christ. Yeah. I have a song that I'll play every now and then, and it, I swear it brings you right to the feet of Christ. It's by uh, Wolves at the Gate Okay. called Man of Sorrows. And this is full hardcore. Sure, sure. But it's all about how he chose to, he was a man of sorrows. Yeah. You know, and it just, it literally, it's not like the the... The classic hymn that you hear of Man of Sorrows, it's a, it's a different song. But boy, I'll tell you, it brings you right to the feet of Christ. And there's a lot of people that would say, well, that's hardcore metal. That can't be yeah. glorifying God. Yeah, it can. Man. And that's my point. So, like, I used to tour around with The Wrecking. You remember The Wrecking? Yes. Oh, my gosh, The Wrecking was great. Um, so I used to tour around with The Wrecking, and they would they would close their sets with, with this song called Prayer Language. And they... they we did like okay, so I was with Bobby Bishop in the wrecking, and we did the one shot thing where we would go around. Yeah. You remember those? Oh you yeah, remember those shows? Uh, me and Bobby go oh, way back. Uh, I was just, I was actually just, just. I grew up in, right next to Lynn. Actually. Oh okay. Yo, what part? Where are you from? Uh, Linfield actually, but we lived right on Route Route One. We were on Broadway. I'm so from uh, Union Square. We were in the poor side right? of town. Okay, okay. I'm from Union Square in Lynn, so okay. not too far. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Yeah, yeah. yeah Route One. <laughs> right, right, yeah, right. You better right, get the right, 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 my old house is still there. It was three houses down from what used to be the town line house. Now it's something else. Okay, yeah, cool, cool. Some restaurant there, right on the, by the lake there. Nice. We were the third house down, you know, which was great because, you know, if we got in trouble, we knew we could run against the traffic and they couldn't chase us. <laughs> That's not very Christian. Sorry, I know. That was bad. That was bad. That was just not so that Christian, was, day, that okay? Was, that was bad. That was, that was way back then. Yeah. I was oh, one of, that's funny. I was one of 11 boys, so you know what I mean? It was it was hard to be good. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Sounds like an excuse, but okay. <laughs> um, hey, here I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Lord brought me out of it, you know? So the uh, they would close their sets with a song called Prayer Language and, and like and, and Doug and Darren, Darren especially were from the record were extremely uh, influential to my, my career. And and like even just kind of the way that I go about like programming drums and stuff is really based around like what Darren from the Wrecking would have done. 
you know, and, and he's still killing it up in Maine and stuff like mm. that. But you know, we, we you know we don't like keep up these days. But you know, it, it, and so they would we would play all over these churches and and you know auditoriums and stuff like that. And they would always be like, you know, uh, sometimes worship music doesn't need words, and and we're just gonna mm-hmm. just perform from our hearts. Mm-hmm. And yeah. like, man, that uh, that that still affect. I play twice a week mm-hmm. to people all over the globe. And there is no different in my heart from from my set that I put on, you know, to a, mm-hmm. a worship set. You know, if I was part of a worship team, that is my worship. That yeah. is what you know, and 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 that's from my soul, you know, right. directly up there, right. you know. And 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 I feel like people when they watch the show, they they get that. You don't need all these words. You don't need. It's about genuine emotion and genuine feeling and it, and and that that is what brings the holy mm. spirit and is 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 being genuine about it it doesn't right. matter if you have 50 people in in a in a in a worship team or you have one dude who's performing if if you are genuinely and you're about it if you're in it to win it dog as as yeah, what's, yeah, his, yeah. what's his face would say the randy randy J- yo dog uh, yeah i heard I, you like oh fish tanks. no that's exhibit oh, oh, oh. shoot be careful now. Dang, I was I was like on, <laughs> on such a I was on such a good train of thought. No, I, you're I good. It's like now that you're saying that, I'm like, oh my goodness. putting fish tanks in the back of a Honda Accord. Dang. All right, what's your okay, next question? I don't question? know I'm where we're going to stop right now. I'm not even sure where we are anymore. <laughs> fish but tanks I, I think what I'm going to do, <laughs> I'm going to play that Scandinavian <laughs> worship uh, song for you, and then we got to get talking about that China thing going. Peter, I want to know about the fish tanks. <laughs> <laughs> so I did hear something about a lizard earlier today. So like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so like we were we were almost late. We were almost late. Because there was a lizard in the bathtub, <laughs> and I had to scoop out this lizard, and I, and I walked in the door, and I, you know, I'm, I'm like six one, whatever, and I, you know, I come in, I'm quick, you know, and and I startled the lizard. He was taking a bath, and I pulled the shower down. <laughs> I was like, I need you to pick you up. And he's like, Oh my gosh, I'm trying to take a bath. <laughs> and so it's a big lizard, a big tegu. Uh, what is he? He's a tegu. Okay, I'm it, not fully familiar with what a tegu is. It but... looks like a big dinosaur, medium, mid-sized. Is he a monster dinosaur. of some type? I, I don't know. That's a question for you. Yeah? Yes. All right, cool. Does yes. he have his own towel? He, he does, actually. <laughs> <laughs> he actually does. It's so like to scoop awesome. up this big lizard, and he didn't want to be scooped. He was still in there. He had shampoo in his hair, you know, <laughs> and so I put him in. I play the song. <laughs> All right, play the song. All right. right. Yeah, hear about the lizard later. Well, this is classic uh, rep show stuff. We go off the rails all Peter, the time here. Peter, so. my manager, is here, and he tells me I need to talk less. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. So we're going to play this next song here, mostly because I just want to show it off. But uh, this song is called uh, You Are Worthy by the Scandinavian Metal Praise team out there in Scandinavia. This goes back, I want to say, late 90s, early 2000s. So... Again, you guys listen to the Revolution Show right here at revolutionshow.org. Oh, and that's a funny one. <laughs> so, uh, that right there was Scandinavian Metal Praise with You Are Worthy. That's, yes. I love that kind of stuff. That was good. Know? That was good. That was good. And uh, that's just, you know, it's different, but it's still, it's worship. I like it. You know? Um, yeah, like man, I said, do whatever, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't let people bring you down. Don't let people say what you're doing isn't cool and it's not worth. If it's worship to you, and if it touches you, you, your your heart and touches your soul, do whatever. You know, don't don't let don't let people's opinions and thoughts influence what is important to you because that might stifle a movement of your soul that you are supposed to have. I just got uh, corrected by my wife. Leland did we waymaker. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you, yeah. I appreciate Yo, that it. that song slaps. You know, I gotta say. <laughs> I, I, you, you've said that from a few times now. I'm smart enough to know what you mean when you, you say that. Are this. you asking what slaps? I haven't mean? heard that yet. How old are you? I, we can't disclose that on the air. Come on. 42. Okay, you, you're Born wearing a Mario shirt. You're cool. I know Come that. On. You don't I know that slaps? Well, I haven't heard slaps. I've heard sick before. I remember that. Okay. You know, and I remember um, we used to watch this show that's not exactly a Christian show, but it was funny because he talked it. This one guy talks about it. He goes, sick. That's what the kids say, right? Uh, these days. Or something like, oh, no. Mad. That's what it was. It was mad. 
You know, that was something that they were saying. That was mad sick, or that was mad, and it means something good. Yeah. Well, like, know? wicked good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, that's a New England thing. You say wicked if you're yeah. in New England. I've been working like... on getting rid of my accent. <laughs> what? Yeah. No. Yeah, I, I hate my accent. My accent makes me sound like I punch holes in, wall, in drywall. Like, I don't, I don't want, you know, like, I'm going to hang out outside of 7-Eleven. So I've been working for the past couple of years on getting rid of my accent. So, like, last time I was here, I had more of an accent. And the time before, when we were in Amherst, mm -hmm. I had a crazy accent. Now, I'm well-spoken. Hello. Oh, I, I part the, sad. the c car. <laughs> the car. You ever hear DJ Dub start the car? I'm when I first was home, I, I can't you not. <laughs> It's funny because, like, when I used to hear dubs, this is back when I was a listener, I used to say, Man, that guy sounds like he's part of the mafia or something. Like that, you know? <laughs> he's got a strong accent, that strong Mission Hill Bostonian accent yeah. there. But, um, yeah, so you had mentioned something earlier that really piqued my interest. I was curious about okay. this. You said something about China. You went to China? Yeah, I might have. You might have? It depends who's asking. Okay. Is yeah, this right. top secret? No, no. I, so, like, um, I worked in the vapor industry for many, many years, and I still kind of do. Um, and so like, oh, okay, let me, let me set that up. I worked in the vapor industry as in like e-liquid, um, yeah. and I would make videos online, uh, talking about, uh, vaping, um, zero nicotine e-liquid and how it was a good coping mechanism for people who struggled with various vices, you know, cause you're just vaping flavors. And so, you know, I teach how to wrap coils and make videos about it. It was really fun. It was super cool. And uh, there is the biggest e-liquid e vapor um, convention mm -hmm. in the entire planet in Shenzhen, China. And the actual country of China sent me an invitation letter. The country? So, yeah, yeah, it's, wow. it's pretty cool. So, like, for an American citizen to be able to go to China and stay for an extended amount of time, you have to be invited by the country. Yeah. And so I got invited. And I got all my visa stuff and got all my stuff. And my first time on a plane ever in my entire life was really? flying to Hong Kong. Wow. wow. That's, yeah. that's, that's a long haul. Yeah. <laughs> it was 22 <laughs> hours or Where'd so. you leave from? Did you end up having to fly out to like Cali or something like that? Did no, you? I went to, I left out of Logan in Boston for, you know, people that are outside of the area listening. Uh, I, I, I left in Boston and then I transferred in Newark and then from Newark to Hong Kong, and then you have to take a private car service, damn, my accent, private car service, uh, over into <laughs> mainland China, so you have Was to, it an Uber or an Uber? <laughs> 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 they have a thing called Didi over there. It's, okay. it's like, it's Chinese Uber. Yeah. Chinese Uber. Yeah. So, while you were there, were you, like, I mean, you hear a lot of stories and stuff about China and stuff, so... I love it. What, I was... Well, I was going to ask you, were you a little concerned about being there? You know, you had the, number one, you had the culture shock and stuff. And how long were you there? I was there a while. Yeah. I, I would rather not say. Okay. I was there a while. Okay. Um, and uh, I, you know, I got there and, and I loved it. I, I don't watch the news. I don't care about right, any of right. that. You know, and like, it is what it is. You know, you yeah. go over there and have a great time. People were wonderful. Uh, and I loved it. I loved it so much. And um, I was really happy there, and I, I made so many wonderful friends. And mm -hmm. what's really cool is every night when I would finish, cause I was in meetings all day, like filming and working and meeting with companies and doing business stuff. And uh, when I had my own free time, I would go to this one town square and I would skate with the local people. And oh, just nice. and I, I like had a friend group of skater skater dudes, and yeah, we'd yeah. all get together every single night and skate. And, like, I knew, like, conversational Mandarin, you know, like, enough to okay. get by. Um, and, and, like, have an okay conversation, you know. Yeah. It, you're, when you're there, it gets stronger. Was that know? something that you had known a little bit before you left? Or you yeah. kind of had to learn on the fly? Uh, so I knew, I knew a little bit when I left, and then I picked it up quickly. Uh, yeah. I knew a little bit from working in the vapor industry. Um, and then, you know, picked it up pretty quickly and, uh, and made a lot of great friends. Yeah, yeah. So, um, <clears throat> I guess one, one thing that comes to mind that is, uh, you know, a lot of times when we find places that we're going to go to, it's usually one of two things that drive it. It's either business related or it's love for the culture or a little bit of both. Would yeah. you say that it's kind of a combo? <laughs> yeah, or? I mean, like, I, I, I've always loved, like, Chinese culture. I think it's yeah. really cool. Uh, you know, there's so much history and so much s stuff like that. Architecture as well, you know. Yeah, like it's, yeah, yeah. it's a fascinating, beautiful country. I mean, we're obviously not talking political scapes or anything like that. We're just talking about the actual 
Yeah, place, I, don't, I don't touch stuff. any politics, right. de- it, no matter what the country. That's right, not, right. it's not, I never touch any of that. I'm mm-hmm. all set. I have, I'm just here for art. I'm just mm-hmm. here to skate. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. like, <laughs> and, uh, and it's great over there, dude. Like, it's, it's incredible. If you ever get the opportunity to go, it's a really long flight, but it's totally worth it. It really is. I know me, I've always wanted to see Japan, personally. Cool, cool. That's definitely one that, money has always been a restriction. Yeah. And time. <laughs> but... That's Everything's definitely. more expensive in Japan. Yeah, Japan's very expensive. <laughs> hey, you know what? You go there with a dollar, you have a hundred yen. So you yeah, feel rich. Might get you a cup of coffee. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you feel rich. <laughs> you know. <so. laughs> but yeah. Uh, so, so like, I was in China. I was skating. I was yeah, doing music. Yeah. I was doing all kinds of really cool stuff, and it was it was wonderful. And then I, I left China and came back to America and uh, and I went to LA and I was out in LA LA for uh, the last like two and a half years I've been in New Hampshire for a year so I, I was yeah. out there for two and a half years okay so this all happened uh, after our last time that we came here in between the last time you came here yeah and then... yeah I've done a lot of stuff yeah it sounds like it. I saw the I saw the North Pole so you like saw the North okay Pole? check this out how you get to China is really crazy. Okay, you 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 you're picturing right now. You picture like a map on a TV show, and then the plane goes, and there's a little red line around it, right? No, no, no. that's not how they do it. Jet streams. Yeah, <laughs> that's not how it works. You 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 go up and over. Yeah. So I went over the top of the Earth, and and really? like I've seen Russia, I've seen Mongolia, I've seen like all of China, and so I stayed in Shenzhen. Um, and so, which is like kind of southern China, mm-hmm. not not like all the way down by Shanghai, but it, it's it's southern China. What's counted yeah, as? Yeah. And um, man, it, it, I saw so much stuff. Mm-hmm. And I have been over the top of this planet. There is nothing. I didn't see any pole. I, didn't see any <laughs> pole. I was going to ask you. About they it. hide no, that no pole. Huh? Yeah. I, hey, listen. I've seen Santa Claus. Okay, so I know that I, it's yeah. a mechanical device that dropped down. It, it's hidden, though. It's, it's hidden. hidden. <laughs> you know, they listen for the planes to fly by. Okay? I was waiting for Bernard to be out there with y'all, like in a bad mood with his elf shoes. No, I man. And what's cool is you fly. At least my particular flight, it was daytime the whole time because you're nice. with the sun. And I'm, I, face against this glass and I'm looking out there I didn't see any elves I didn't see any Christmas nothing. trees nothing oh, well. not even the bumble no <laughs> Oh man! And the polar bears are well camouflaged, so you yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, it is. Evil. Well, when you're that high, you're not gonna see anything anyway yeah. and stuff. But uh, that that's pretty neat, you know. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I would I I knew that you didn't just fly in straight lines. No, I would have never guessed you flying that far north. That's what I'm saying. I was like, this is so crazy. Mm-hmm. It is so. Cra- and the only food that was on the plane for 22 hours, other than your like. Pre, you know your meals that come with your ticket was wasabi Chex Mix, <laughs> oh, and, nice. and and so like I'm I sorry have, I couldn't do it. I spent gone. 22 hours one way and yeah. then 22 hours the other way. So I've spent two oh, almost like two full Earth rotations on this plane, yeah. and the only thing I had to snack on was wasabi Chex Mix oh. the whole time. And you, it, you couldn't bring anything. I didn't think of that. Uh. <laughs> that would have made too much sense. That's, see, now he's talking my language right there. I, wait, what? I could do what? Yeah. Yeah, but that's uh, that's that's an impressive flight. Thank um, you. I know for me, I have a hard time sitting down still for a half an hour drive. Yeah. But I do like flying, I'll admit that. But I, I, I've got to admit also, f- the flight patterns are weird. Yeah. I've had times where I simply had to go from... Manchester to Tennessee. Okay. And they flew me down to Georgia. Yeah. To fly me up to Tennessee. Yep. I'm like yeah. I flew past my airport. That's how but it goes. That's how they go. It's cheaper to do that layover, and it's like uh, okay, I don't. Cheaper I don't, for them. I don't fully get it, <laughs> yeah. but okay, whatever. So, but I, I learned that that flights are weird. So, well, that's interesting. That's interesting. So you've really been keeping yourself busy and stuff. So, where you're going all over the place and stuff, where do you find time to make the music? What do you mean? Like, yeah, I mean, just, this is what I whatever, do for a living. Yeah, this is whatever, my job, dude. Just away. <laughs> like, this is the <laughs> only thing I do. You know? So like, he's actually getting paid. <laughs> yeah. Speaking sure of which, click yeah. over now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got another song I want to play. Uh, this one's called. Oh, where did it go? Hold on a second. I got to find it again. 
Oh snap. See, this is me being prepared like always. Somebody say something. Okay. <laughs> here we are. The Revolution Show, the show that rocks to a different beat. Nothing but professionals here, okay? Nothing but professionals. That's I think it's right. called a and beautiful... If you, and if you'd really be interested in becoming a DJ here, you know, we could really use some help. So, uh, yeah, do, do check if, out our website. And down you there, could... you're going to find a place where you can click on to volunteer. And you guys maybe should, you um... could do it, too. You guys should do a simul simulcast or whatever the term is of the uh, of the cult show on here, directly to the airwaves. We can talk about stuff like that after. It's, it's just definitely. start doing business live on the air. <laughs> 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 well, I got this song that I'd like to play, uh, "Beautiful Disaster." So now that you're talking about all these little secret things and stuff. Is there anything that we need to be listening for that I might have missed the first time through? Um, okay, so uh, this is this is my lady's favorite song. Nice. Um, this is a song that I had. Okay, so this is this is pretty cool. I am a huge um, Bring Me Horizon fan. Like like I, you know I I really look up to you know their messages. You know not the same message as I have, but their, their music, musicality is really great, and I think Ollie Sykes is an incredible performer, he gets me super hyped, and I'd love mm. to get, like, knocked down in one of his mosh pits. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've been there before. So there's, a, they have a song called Drowned, um, and one of the, the lyrics in it is, like, who will fix me now, um, save me when I drown, you know, stuff like mm. that, it's a really mm. good song, um, and so... I kind of based some chord progression of that and changed it around in my own way in this song. And then my friend John Petrozelli, who is a way better artist than I'll ever be. John Petrozelli, he's got a studio called The Sound Oven over in Wolfboro, New Hampshire. The dude is, is a genius. This guy's incredible. He can play everything. He's got a bushy beard. He's great. Um... And so I, I used to send him tracks back in the day to just have him mas master and mess around with. He's like, oh, you mind if I hop on this? And I said, yeah, sure, okay. And he gives me a guitar part back. And I'm like, all right. Well, then he throws a bass part on it. And then so when I was picking out songs for this new album, I was like, you know, Beautiful Disaster hasn't been on anything. And um, it would be a really good fit for kind of the tone of the album. You know, it's uplifting, but also important. You know, it's deep. It's important. And um, so yeah, that's I, I brushed it up, touched it up a little bit, modernized it for 2022, and then here it is. Nice, right. nice. I actually was curious uh, where you were getting the uh, guitar riffs and stuff from, because I wasn't sure if maybe you had a way of doing that yourself or if you were reaching out for. So I can play a, a little bit. I can play like production guitar. You know what yeah. I mean? Like yeah. I can play production guitar and bass and stuff like that to get by. Uh, I'm not a guitar player, but I can play guitar. You Enough know. to get what you need. Exactly, and then yeah. um, the like main guitar phrasing is is a cross between my own nonsense and John being very talented. Ah, so. yeah, yeah. All right, so why don't we get to this song here? This song called "Beautiful Disaster" by Gabe Smith. Again, you guys listen to the Revolution Show right here at RevolutionShow.org. I am here, DJ Rempster, co-hosted with uh, DJ Dave and Gabe, and uh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> 